what's going on guys as I'm sure you could tell from the title today's video is all about getting OS 10.10 Yosemite the final release up and running on your Hackintosh systems now in case you missed my last video I unboxed some pretty sweet hardware I decided for that my, you know my next machine I decided to invest in the x99 platform so back behind me on this test bench here is some of that hardware I have the gigabyte x99 UD4 motherboard Intel 6 core, uh, Core i7-5820K, as well as 8 gigabytes of 2133 MHz RAM. So it's gonna be a pretty sweet system, and that's the system that I am gonna be using in today's video. Now, yes, you heard that right. This is gonna be a video on not only just, you know, in general, you know, for Z87, Z77, even older platforms, but also if you have an X99 system, or maybe if you're thinking about it, how you can get OS 10 Yosemite uh, running on that. So that said, there will be a point in this video that if you are on a supported platform, you can ignore and I will make that clear to you. But if you are on a system that does indeed need a patched kernel like the X99 platform, then there will be an extra step in there of patching that kernel. Uh, so with that said, um, I do have one last disclaimer uh, to get out of the way and that this is impossible to make uh, this subject rather to make a comprehensive guide for every single system out there because the hardware you have is obviously different from what I have, from which is obviously different from what my neighbor has. Uh, everyone has different hardware, and in doing so, could very easily come uh, a different installation process. You may need boot flags that I don't need. You may need kernel extensions that I don't need. I may need some stuff that you guys don't need and vice versa. Um, so this guide is just a general reference. If you do have problems, there's a comment section down there. Uh, there's the roachtechnology.com forums, the Tony Mac forums, there's the Insanely Mac forums. Uh, if you guys can't get a you know fully functioning system out of this video, it's close. You're close, uh, but you know there's other solutions out there for if you just can't get it. If you're stuck on a PCI configuration, begin. Uh, people have lists of kernel extensions that you can try. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and we'll jump into the video. Here we are on the desktop of my Mavericks installation, and as always, before proceeding, there's a few things we're going to need. The first one being, well, a copy of OS 10 Yosemite. This tutorial assumes that you've already gone to the Mac App Store and downloaded the official copy of Yosemite. Now you want to make sure it's in your Applications folder, and that's because I want to make this disclaimer right now, I'm going to be using the Tony Mac x86 UniBeast method, and there's a few reasons for this. The first one being that it's a method that most of my viewers are already very familiar with and use, and also because it's the least amount of work for what I find to be the best result. Now with that, there's plenty other methods to do this. There's my hack, you can go ahead and create one manually, you can use different bootloaders, but like I said, I'll be using the Tony Mac method, which therefore implies I'll be using the Chimera bootloader, which is a branch of Chameleon. You can use Clover with any other method you would like, uh, but if you want to follow this video, I will be using the Tony Mac method and the Chimera bootloader. Once you get OS X up and running, you're free to change bootloaders and you're free to modify however you'd like, but just as a general ground in a general video, I think this is the best method. With all that out of the way, there's a few other things we're going to need, and which I've included in a download link in the description right below. The first being a kernel patching text document. As stated in the beginning of this video, I'm going to be doing this on an X99 motherboard, which does indeed require a patched kernel. If you're on maybe a socket 1366 or a socket 1155 machine, you will not need to do this, but I will do that for this video to show others that are potentially interested in this platform how it's done. Also in the download, we have a little utilities folder. These are just our UniBeast and MultiBeast utilities. Pretty self-explanatory, I'll get into those a little bit later. And also one last kernel extension, we need Voodoo TSC Sync if you're using a 6 or an 8 core processor. If you're just on a quad core socket 1155 processor, you will not need this kernel extension. And the last of the requirements is an 8GB or higher flash drive, as well as a hard drive or potentially hard drives to install it on. And I'll go ahead and I'll explain this. If you're installing OS X to a machine that has a legacy BIOS, you could simply format the drive as GUID, install OS X, install the bootloader, and be good to go. However, if you have a motherboard with a UEFI BIOS on it, that's where things become a little bit more different. This is where MBR versus GUID formatting, as well as different bootloaders such as Clover, become important. A lot of UEFI motherboards currently do not support booting with legacy bootloaders such as Chimera. Therefore, if you wish to use this method, you'll need to install OS X to a GUID formatted drive, but then clone that installation over to an MBR formatted hard drive, and then install Chimera. So for this tutorial, where you could potentially need two hard drives, is if you're on a UEFI BIOS, you must install OS X to a GUID formatted drive, and then clone it over to an MBR drive. And unfortunately, you cannot just partition a drive half GUID and half MBR, it's always going to be the entire drive. So while that may be kind of a pain, that's going to be the cost for using the Tony Mac method on a UEFI based machine. 
If you don't have a spare drive or if you think this is just an extra step, this is where you may want to look into other methods such as Clover. I hope to have a video on this in the very near future, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're interested and tell me below in the comments. Now with all that out of the way, we're ready to go ahead and prepare our installation media. So I'm going to open up Disk Utility here. And once this comes up, I'm going to find my USB drive over here in the left column. Come up to Partition, change it to One Partition. Make sure that it's macOS extended journaled. And something very important for the UniBeast method, make sure it's MBR and not GUID. This is where the whole UEFI thing comes into play. Since I'm going to be installing on an X99 motherboard that has UEFI on it, I need to make sure this is MBR. Otherwise, I will not be able to boot up with this method. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to call this Yosemite UniBeast. And with that in mind, I'm going to click Apply. Now that that's been formatted, I'm going to close out of Disk Utility. Next, we're going to launch UniBeast and start the creation of our drive. One thing to note here, you need at least version 5.0. However, version 5.0.1 is available as of this video. And once this is up, we're just going to click through a little continue, continue, continue. Of course, we agree. We're going to find our little drive we just created here. And, well, of course, we're going to do Yosemite. So we're going to click continue one last time here. I don't need any of that fun stuff, but if you want to go ahead and try on a laptop or something, feel free. We're going to click continue. We're going to verify. And last but not least, we're going to enter that extremely secure password as always and wait for UniBeast to finish. And a couple minutes later, our UniBeast drive has been created. Now, since I'm on a platform that requires it, the first thing I'm going to do is patch the kernel. So I'm going to open up my little kernel patching document here. And there's simply two terminal commands that we need to enter. Now these terminal commands will need to be modified to include the name of your UniBeast installation drive. So right here where it says USB, we're simply going to delete. And since mine is called Yosemite UniBeast, that's exactly what I'm going to name it. And we're going to do that for both of these commands. So once we've done that, I'm going to open up a little terminal window here. And now we're simply going to copy and paste these into terminal. Now one thing to make note of, these are pseudo commands, which means that they require a password. So you cannot have a blank password set on your user account. You must indeed have a password, even if it's like mine, and is extremely secure. So if entered correctly, you should not really receive any output. Terminal will just be ready to accept another command, which we will then copy this command here, and paste that one as well. Yes, it is that easy to patch your kernel on these platforms. But with that, a huge shout out to Stinga11. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and close out of Terminal and out of our little kernel patching document. And we can now move over to voodoo-tsc-sync.kext. Like I said, this is only for 6 or 8 core CPUs. So if you're running a quad core, you will not need this. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this kernel extension and we're going to move it to our UniBeast drive. But you'll notice that all the files are currently hidden. There's two ways you can go about doing this. You can either unhide the files with an app or a terminal command, of which I've used both in the past, or you can hit Command Shift G, which will bring up a little Go to the Folder dialog. From here, you can type volumes, slash the name of the drive, and we're going to be putting this in the extensions folder within the extra folder. So once you've typed that out, go ahead and hit Enter. It will then be brought to that folder, where we can then paste the kernel extension. Now, if you've done as I have, and you chose to not show the hidden files, it's going to look like that's the only kernel extension in there. But keep in mind, there's plenty more in there. And with that, we've successfully created our UniBeast installation media. Now, let's go ahead and install. Here we are after we've rebooted our computer and booted into the flash drive, which should look pretty familiar to most of you. Now, personally, the only kernel flag I needed to boot up was NPCI equals 0x2000. Depending on your GPU or processor or chipset, you may need others. And assuming you've entered the correct kernel flags, you should be presented with the installer. As usual, we're going to prepare our drive by heading up to Disk Utility. And regardless of the platform you're on, formatting the drive as a GUID HFS partition. After the drive has been formatted properly, we're free to install OS X. After the installation is completed, we have one final step before post-installation. We need to copy over that patched kernel that we created earlier from the installer drive onto the drive that we just installed OS X to. To do this, we're going to boot back up into our UniBeast drive, but this time open a terminal window. The terminal command is on screen, but also down in the video description for your convenience. Keep in mind that you'll need to modify the command to match your UniBeast drive name as well as your Yosemite drive's name. Like before, there won't be much output if the terminal command was done successfully. You can now reboot the computer, boot up from your flash drive, and boot into Yosemite. 
Once again, I needed to use NPCI equals 0x2000 to boot. Now that I'm booted into Yosemite, I'm going to clone my install from a GUID volume to an MBR volume as stated in the beginning of this video. At this point, you're free to install other bootloaders as well, so share your experiences in the comments below. When cloning to an MBR drive, Carbon Copy Cloner will give you a warning message, which is normal. Since this isn't a real Mac, we won't have any problems booting. Once the clone is finished, we're going to reboot the computer, boot up from our Unibeast drive once again, but this time boot into the newly cloned hard drive. Regardless of your installation method, you're now ready for post-installation. Install your required kernel extensions and bootloader and enjoy Yosemite. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting that like button as well as sharing your Yosemite experiences below in the comments. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.